The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. the worst estrangement from God. It's not to drugs or to prostitution or some other vice or sin or not going to church, but to religion. In other words, what is the worst way that you can get away from God? Run away from God. Run to religion. The word religion is from the Latin to make you a slave. Religare. To bind you. To enslave you. Jesus frees us. Religion enslaves us. Lots of people have run away from God to religion. They have made religion their God. Not the God who is compassion. Not the God whom the Bible says is love. But the God who is judgment. And hence their religion is in their finger. Pointing fingers at others. You're not married in the church. You're going to go to hell. Hmm? You're not this or that. Their faith is in their finger, pointing fingers at others. Those were the Pharisees. When Jesus told them about God, what the heart of God was, they went away sad. Hmm? Their God was an idea out there. And Jesus says, no, God is not an idea. God is incarnate. God is in the people around you. It's easy to say, I love God if God is out there somewhere. But it's another thing to say, I love God if I have to love God in the people who are around me. All the people who are around me. To love them, not judge them. You see, it's supposed to be good news, not good advice. 
And how many people think that it's good advice, always giving advice, do this, do that, do this, do that, instead of being the good news. You see, the good news is not something. It's someone. St. Francis of Assisi said this very poignantly when he said, preach the gospel at all times. Only when necessary should you use words. Only when necessary should you use words. You have to be the gospel. The good news are the people in your life receiving the good news in the way that you treat them, in the way that you act, or is it all about pointing fingers mm -hmm. because you think they don't live the way that you would like them to live? You see, we have to meet people where they are at in their walk of life, not where we would want them to be, but where they are at. I'm not expecting you all to be like me. Huh? And you shouldn't expect me to be like you. Why is it that some people have left here from Divine Mercy Church? Uh, because I may have said something hmm, that they don't like, or, you know, uh, I rubbed them the wrong way, or I'm, you know, whatever, you know. And they don't forgive. They expect a perfect priest. And there's no perfect priest. Like there's no perfect human beings. There's only human beings, not perfect beings. Mm -hmm. You expect me to forgive you, but so often people in church do not forgive the priest. Mm -hmm. You know, not everything that I say is always you know, flowery or, you know, sometimes I may say something that is you know, not the... Um, I say a lot of stuff and I usually don't mince words and uh, you wouldn't want a priest who uh, chooses his words carefully. You want somebody who, who lets the spirit flow and sometimes maybe some of the other spirit flows. Who knows? Okay. But that's, <laughs> that's, where, that's where forgiveness has to be, where we have to accept each other as we are on the, on the road of life where we are at. Hmm? Not expect perfection because we ain't going to get it in this life. And so often in, in religion, we want other people to be the way we are. Hmm? You know, like, uh, for example, the Jehovah Witnesses say that only 144,000 people, because the book of Revelation says that supposedly, are going to be saved. So only 144,000 people are going to go to heaven. Everybody else is going to hell. Hmm? I thought to myself, well, that's kind of dumb. You know, why, why, are they, why are they out knocking on doors looking for more competition? <laughs> if only 144,000 are going to heaven and everybody else is going to be lost, why look for more competition? <laughs> but when the Bible talks about thousands, it's saying lots. The Bible's figurative. But you have to be the best Bible somebody reads in their life. Because you may be the only Bible they ever read. What are they reading? Are they reading judgment? Hmm? Pointing to others? Hmm? The worst tragedy that can happen to a human being in this life is to turn away from God as the Pharisees did. When Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you, they turned away. And they went into their commandments and into their rules. And we are very good at that as Catholics, as Christians. See, we are surrounded by uh, religions where you know the people in the different Christian churches they you know, like, oh you Catholics you've got statues you're going to hell hmm? <laughs> hmm? you call a priest father the Bible says call no one on earth father hmm? you're going to hell hmm? and then Catholics look at 
uh, other Christians say, oh, no, you, you, you're wrong. Hmm. It's all this finger pointing. Stop it. Hmm? That's the way of the Pharisees. The way of Jesus is the way of love. The way of acceptance. See, they moved away from the light by preferring the darkness of their pride and their religion. You think that the worst thing that can make, that can take the person away from God is some sin, like drugs or the casino or alcohol, but the most dangerous thing to take a person away from God is religion. Religion. So many people have turned away from God because of their religion. When you make the religious practice and commandments your God, confusing the moon with the finger that is pointing to the moon. Confusing the moon with the finger that is pointing to the moon. Rules and rigidity become your God. And that turns the people around you away from God. Pride as the devil himself is something that is very dangerous in people who are religious. thinking that you are better. People become religious atheists. Their God is their religion. Don't be like that. They don't have a relationship, but they have a religion. Turning away from God to go with a church or the rules or regulation. The rules and regulations are there as, you know, the, the signs on the road are, are there to, to point you so that you don't get into an accident. But don't confuse the rules and the regulations with the destination where you're going. For example, people ask me, Father, how late can I get to Holy Mass for it to count? <laughs> Well, you know, when I was in the seminary, they told us, as long as you make it on time for the collection, it counts. <laughs> <laughs> or another question that I get. Father, how can I kiss my girlfriend so as not to commit sin? <laughs> well... Anyway, I won't tell you what I say, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a sin? Well, you have a conscience inside of you. Use it. That's the voice of God in you. Mm -hmm. You know, I have this experience in my own family. I have a cousin who moved out of Poland to another country in uh, Europe after the after the European Union was opened up, most of my family left Poland. I still have a lot of family in Poland, but most of my family that was still left in Poland uh, moved out to different countries in the European Union seeking uh, employment. And one of my cousins, she met a gentleman who is not Catholic. Not only that, he's black. And they got married. Woo! The worst thing that could have happened to that side of my family, who are extremely religious. Her parents, as lots of people in Poland, go to church religiously every Sunday. Pray their rosary, do this, do that, go to confession every week. I mean, they are the most religious people ever. I mean, you know, they're like, they're in front of the altar. Oh, 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 oh. 
These are my aunt, my aunt and uncle. Huh? Extremely religious people. And when my cousin did this, met her husband, who is Muslim, who is black, my aunt and uncle said, if you dare to arrive with him in our town, my uncle said, I will shoot you and him. They disowned her. They've never met their grandchildren, ever. Hmm? Because he, he's Muslim and he's black. What will the people say in our town? What will the people say in church who are just as racist as they are? But no, they're, they're, they're so religious, you know, they love God. No, they love the idea of God. Huh? They love their false idea of the God that they have conjured up in their imagination. It's not the God presented to us by Jesus Christ. It's not the God whom we met in the readings today. That the people tried to exclude the Gentiles and everybody else. And God says in the readings today, No! I am the God of everybody. And my aunt and uncle, who've been to incredible universities in Poland, they are very learned people. In fact, he was the mayor of the town. Okay? Very learned people with lots of degrees. Huh? Blinded. Completely blinded. But he's not Catholic! Hmm? And now comes on the scene my grandmother. Who never went to any school, cannot read or write. But she has lived through lots of discrimination. She lived through the Second World War, where not too far from where she lived, millions of people were gassed, tortured, burned, just because they were Jewish, a different religion, or because they were gay or lesbian, or because they were gypsies, the Roma people. Or because they were of a different political affiliation other than the Nazis. She saw what hatred can do. And in many times, all done in the name of God. What was the motto of the Nazis? Gott mit uns. Huh? Use your German here. What does that mean? God is with us. Huh? The swastika is actually a, a cross. Yeah. It's another form of the cross. Huh? All done in the name of God. Well, now you do. That's why you come to church, to find out. Uh, to make us reflect. And my grandmother welcomed my cousin with open arms into her home. And in my grandma's home, if you go there, and some people have gone, they will see that on, in the living room, on display, is my cousin and her family for everybody to see. Hmm? She has a big picture. Not bigger than mine. Mine is bigger. Than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and when I asked my grandma, I said, do you, do you know that 
because she welcomed them in their home. And I said, do you know that he's not Catholic? Do you know that he's Muslim? And she says, well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I, I said, well, he's a different religion, you know. And she says, well, I don't, isn't there just one God, she says, and isn't he the God of everybody? And doesn't he love everybody? Do you need a university education for that? No, you just have to be a human being. Uh -huh. That doesn't have your faith in the finger. You have to be a human being to look at everybody with the eyes of God. That's how Jesus looked, and that's precisely what he says today. Huh? Precisely. What does he say? Love one another as I have loved you. You know, many people, the last time they were happy in their life was when they were four years old. If you read the Bible, you'd know what Jesus said. Unless you become like a four-year-old, you ain't going to be happy in life. You're not going to have the kingdom of God in you. Hmm? My grandmother is a very simple person. Very simple. Unsophisticated. <laughs> very simple. Last time many people were happy was when they were four years old. And you look at a four-year-old, they don't have color. Later on, people teach them. Their family teaches them. Huh? Tell them, no, 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 you're Catholic. They're, 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 they're uh, Muslim. They're bad. Huh? You're, you're better. Huh? No, the fact that you're Catholic don't make you better. It gives you more responsibility to be better. Huh? That's precisely the way the Pharisees acted if you read the Bible. And Jesus did not condemn prostitutes, tax collectors. Yeah. He was very harsh with the religious people. Who eventually killed him? Who eventually killed him? So let's take an example. Take the example from Jesus. Take the example from my grandmother. And listen to those words. I don't know much, but I know that there's one God and he loves everyone. Everybody, we look around here. You know, when I look here, it's kind of like heaven here. Because if you read the book of Revelation, we've got every race imaginable here. All sorts of languages, uh, ages, and everything. And it's so wonderful. Mm. That we all, uh, the world is so divided. We live in such a hate filled world. So hate filled. Let's not be participants in that and recreating that, but commit ourselves to accepting one another, loving one another as we are, as the people in your life are. As I accept you, so you should accept me, and we all walk together with the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Did you get something out of this sermon? Yes, yes. absolutely. You always get something. Out of because I always do. You're so wonderful. You explain it so good. <clears throat> oh, good. And you make my day by being here, Thank right in the Father. front row. I love being uh -huh. here. And you didn't ask me any questions during this sermon today. No, I'm not <laughs> Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty. Maker and share the sermon. Share the sermon. Share. Put a light. Father. God. God.